Hello, I'm JW. Today we have these uh, plug things here which were sent in, and uh, we've got three of these, uh, two of which are faulty, and the other one which uh, does actually work. So uh, hopefully we can see what the actual fault is by comparing the working and non-working versions, and we'll also see how these things actually work and what they're intended to do. Uh, so I've got three of these. These were sent in by Bren from Dublin, that's in Ireland. And we've got three of these, uh, two working and one is not. And these are made by Belkin, and essentially what these are are timers, and the deal is you can plug in the uh, thing on the back here just to a normal UK outlet and then you plug your appliance into the front here and you've got a selector on the side here for the time so I've got half an hour, three hours or six hours just move it to the appropriate one and then the idea is you plug in whatever the thing is you're going to be using and then after the time has elapsed it will then turn it off to presumably save energy and obviously that avoids leaving things on standby which obviously on certain older appliances particularly was actually incredibly wasteful not so much to do with newer ones, but certainly old ones it could use in some cases almost as much power in standby as they were in actual use. So a fairly straightforward device, just say basically a timer, and so it just runs down and then disconnects the load at the end of that period. And I've got a button on the top here, just to, just to uh, turn the thing on, and that's uh, pretty much it. Now these were sent in quite some time ago, and uh, the one reason for the delay is that these screws holding together, I hope you see there, are these evil triangular jobs, which uh, seems quite difficult to get the bits for, but uh, we now have the appropriate bit. Here it is, so we'll be able to open them with uh, some ease. Now, uh, first of all, I think we'll just check on the uh, working one here, just to get an idea of how these things actually operate, and we'll also see how much power this uses in itself, because of course the whole point of this is to save energy, but of course when this is actually used it will obviously use some energy itself, so um, interesting to see how much power the thing itself does actually use. So I've got the uh, power meter here, we've seen this before, uh, LP2200 is the model number if you are wanting to get one, uh, came directly from China, and uh, I've actually plugged into this extension lead here, so uh, we can obviously just plug the device in the front here. Unfortunately this was a huge long extension lead, I couldn't find a shorter one, but uh, never mind it will do the job. So obviously we've got no power or wattage or anything else, voltage today is 244 or thereabouts, so it seems perfectly normal and uh, regular there. So uh, this is apparently the working one, so if we plug it in here, thusly, then uh, we can see how much power this is going to use. Now of course it's on the off state at the moment, but if we press the button here, let me see, there's a brief pulse of power there, and uh, obviously it's now turned on some sort of internal relay or whatever, and the timer is now running. And we see the power here is actually uh, 0.25 watts, so uh, pretty low there. Current there is uh, very small, it's only 16 milliamps. Power factor is absolutely horrendous at basically nothing, or, or almost nothing there. So uh, in terms of actual power usage, pretty much going to be zero. And say in terms of uh, power there, quarter of a watt, so pretty much uh, next to zero. So uh, certainly uh, it is actually going to save the energy there now. So this is the working one. If we unplug that, it will go back to zero. If we plug it back in again, so in its off condition, it uses absolutely nothing, which is what you want because obviously the whole point of this is to avoid things being on standby. So if this used power when it was off, clearly it'll be a complete waste of time. So in terms of the design, it seems to be uh, doing what you'd expect. No uh, power there in the standby, but uh, when it's on, of course, it does use that uh, tiny amount for whatever electronics we've got inside. So that's the working one. Got a couple of the uh, non-working ones here, so again it's zero there, but. Uh, you press the button, it sort of uh, works when you press the button down. That's actually using uh, about 11 watts there, that seems rather excessive. But when you release the button it goes back to zero, so it's not actually latching on, so clearly uh, not working there correctly. Here's the other one which is also faulty. And again, in the default state no power. If we press the button, yeah, it goes up to rather a lot, and then if you release it, it goes back down to zero. So, uh, similar sort of fault on the both of them there. Try a different time setting, but uh, no, nothing uh, giving there. So, uh, definitely something wrong with these. And interesting to note that when it's actually on, the power factory is in fact one, which suggests there's some kind of resistive load inside here, basically heating up. And also the fact that it's actually 10 watts is fairly concerning because... Uh, that's a lot of power to be dissipating inside a plastic box. So uh, anyway, they uh, are definitely going to be faulty, and the other one definitely appears to function. Now I've got two of these uh, set up here, so uh, the idea is that the power will come on. This will uh, serve as the power indicator, so default state, no power there. Press the button, 
turned on and then of course it turned off after the required time. And the uh, faulty one, as you saw, let's use that rather alarming 10 watts. Uh, press the button and uh, of course nothing happening there, so clearly some kind of malfunction inside. Now, another problem with these, not uh, specific to these, but certainly a common problem with uh, fairly large devices is if you have a uh, extension lead or the sort of bar arrangement like this, when you put them in, you can't put another one in next to it because they're too fat. So you can't actually uh, get them in. It happens a lot with those sort of power supply type things as well. Now, just opening the uh, faulty one here, or one of the faulty ones, and so it's these weird triangular fasteners which uh, really have absolutely no purpose and it's totally pointless, it just makes it more difficult to open stuff. But uh, you see there it is literally just a triangular hole in the top of that, so uh, quite an odd looking uh, piece of stuff there. So just get those uh, out of there and uh, we can see what we've got inside. Now, so this is one of the faulty ones, but uh, whatever's broken inside, it's clearly uh, not uh, immediately obvious from the top there. So just got the three uh, holes here for the pins going in, so earth at the top there, neutral here and line over there, and it's presumably any line that's going to be switched, so we'll uh, look at that later on. So a little uh, peek under there, so that's presumably the relay which does the actual switching. And then I've uh, got a few other bits here, a little LED there to light up on the front, just goes through to this uh, plastic piece here and the actual thing's actually on the top there, so it's just sort of moving the light up towards the top. Little button on the top there, and that's just pressed on this uh, plastic tab here in the case. And on the side there, just slide switch for the three time settings. Now holding the we've got yet another one of these stupid triangular jobs, so uh, that will have to obviously come out. Again, entirely pointless these things, but uh, there you go, it's what uh, many of the manufacturers seem to like using. And uh, hopefully we can then get this thing out of here. I know there's actually another one uh, hiding underneath in there, so uh, that's a bit of a uh, nuisance down in the bottom there, but I guess we'll uh, just hoik out the uh, socket contacts there, and then we can see, uh, hopefully get to the other screw there. So let's uh, open that up. Now these are reasonably well made it seems, and made by Belkin as a fairly known brand, it's uh, kind of what you would expect, so uh, hopefully we can uh, pry it out of here now. Right, well, uh, bit of a tangle with the various actual wires there. A uh, button just goes over the top of the actual switch on the board there. And on the back here, yep, it's more of those uh, dreadful triangular jobs, so uh, let's have those out as well. Now, I'll just have a closer look here at the uh, circuitry. So, here's the plug part here, just a separately molded piece, so they probably just do different plugs for various different countries. Just got the wires coming off the back there. Bit of an unfortunate uh, loose strand hanging off of the uh, line there, that's uh, certainly not ideal. But essentially three wires coming through there, and the uh, earth just goes straight over to the earth contact, so no connection to the circuit board, the green and yellow wire there. The neutral again comes straight over to the actual socket contact there, and then we've got an additional wire coming off for the neutral going down to the circuit board, and then the line goes straight into the circuit board, and then we've got another one coming out here. So it is going to be a single pole switch. This will be the relay here, this uh, black item at the bottom here. A good sky relay, apparently. But uh, nevertheless, that's going to be line in. And when the relay is switched on, it'll just switch the line through to the contact on the front. And we've also got this additional red wire here, which comes from the line in and uh, actually goes up here. Appears to be going to the switch there. So the deal with that will be that, uh, as we saw, when this is in the off state, it draws zero power. So, of course, this is actually going to be completely disconnected. 
and then in order to switch it on it's just taking that wire up to the top here so when you press that that's just going to temporarily link through power to the rest of the circuitry energize the relay and then the uh, actual power for the rest of this will come via the outgoing terminal here obviously on the board somewhere so that when this relay is de-energized it actually disconnects its own circuitry from the power as well because of course then you want uh, the thing to have zero power you don't want to sort of using power in standby because that's the whole point of this thing uh, trying to avoid in the first place uh, relay is reasonably rated i mean there's 250 volts ac rated to 16 amps so again that's uh, plenty there because there's only a 13 amp uh, supply there 24 volt dc coil and it's obviously got ratings for various other voltages uh, as well but obviously the 250 is applicable there so certainly a problem with that now on the board here we've got a couple of uh, things which have not been installed so we've got uh, MOV1 so I presume that was a uh, surge suppressor or metal oxide varistor not installed and then there's a link been put in where it says TF1 now uh, TF1 could well be thermal fuse so it did have the function for a thermal fuse of some kind there but just been installed a uh, solid link so not entirely clear why they uh, would have done that uh, this yellow deal here will be a uh, capacitor of some kind so yep there we go uh, 250 volts AC rated so that's fine and uh, there's a X2 as well so I don't know who ST cap might be but uh, again reasonably uh, rated part there 0.22 microfarads for that so uh, presumably a capacitive dropper type of uh, power supply bearing in mind it's only going to use a microscopic amount of current just to drive the electronics a couple of fairly large resistors here those are presumably what uh, was dissipating the power when the actual button was pressed on that one we uh, saw earlier a uh, green LED there just to indicate the thing is in the on state and so the switch appears to just be a uh, yeah, just momentary on switch which connects the line through to the circuitry so the relay can switch on now on the back here is uh, very sparse as well got in the middle here bridge rectifier just about to see the plus or minus and the AC marking so basically AC in there and then uh, rectified AC out the other side or pulses of DC this is the relay over here so again they've got fairly large uh, contacts there for the two wires that come in solder has been rather crudely snipped off on these because it was far too long they've just uh, hacked it off with some uh, cutting tool there so a bit uh, shoddy there uh, this over here Q1 is apparently going to be a transistor presumably to switch on the relay and it looks like a diode there across that so when you turn it off you don't get a big spike of uh, current which then goes and destroys the transistor a couple of resistors over there and uh, not a lot else there and then over this side we've got the uh, little chip there which is presumably a microcontroller of some kind so a six pin thing looks like the uh, programming header or something adjacent to that and other than that we've just got a, uh, a few other passive components there so a few resistors and other items on the side there so again it's basically all going to be done in the chip here just basically a simple timer there's no external crystal or anything on this so it's going to use some sort of internal oscillator there but again it doesn't have to be critically accurate uh, but anyway, it's only going to be switching on a sort of hour interval so a few minutes here and there really won't make uh, much difference at all now in terms of what's actually broken here, as we saw in the previous segment, the relay wasn't switching on and of course therefore there was no output and also the thing wasn't actually powering itself to keep it in an on state. So it's either going to be the relay itself, fairly unlikely because that's just a uh, coil of wire inside and a mechanical switch, or more likely it's going to be something which is actually supposed to drive the relay or turn it on. Now I've got a transistor here which is probably going to be the actual switching item and a diode there across the relay contact. So what I'll do is just measure the uh, DC resistance of this. Now on the data sheet for this relay, this is a 24 volt coil, and the resistance should be 2880 ohms, or about 2.8K. So if we measure across here, we should be able to get that uh, sort of reading. And of course, if we don't, then it indicates something else has failed. Now on the meter here, we use the normal resistance range. This only applies a very low voltage and therefore should not cause the diode or any of the semiconductors there to conduct. So we'll just use that one there and just see what the uh, resistance is across there. Now this is the uh, faulty one, or one of the faulty ones, so if we just go in there. Now we're only getting 0.4 ohms, which uh, is extremely small and is basically a uh, short circuit. 
No, I'm just checking the other direction there. And yet it's basically the same again. So clearly that's not uh, the 2.8K we were looking for. Uh, this one here is also the uh, faulty one, so again we'll just uh, see what we'll get there. And we're getting in the region of 0.5 ohms, so again that's no good. And also in the other direction. And uh, again we're getting 0.4, so uh, again that appears to be uh, shorted. Uh, this one here is the working one, so again we'll just check what we have there. And this one we're getting about uh, the 2.8k, which we would expect. To get the terminals there, yeah, so 2.75 or something, so that seems pretty much reasonable. And again, if we go in the other direction, again, it's basically the same reading. So uh, that's the working one. So it appears that either the relay coil is shorted, very unlikely, more likely is one of these semiconductors has uh, failed short. Now, another way to confirm this is use the diode check function here on the meter, which is this one at the bottom. This applies a rather higher voltage to this and therefore it will cause any diode things to actually turn on and conduct and then it will show the forward voltage drop of the diode normally in the region of about 0.6 volts for a uh, silicon diode so just try it again on the uh, the working one here now I'll just go in there if it don't see the uh, terminal so in that direction we're getting about 1.2 volts so that will suggest it's two diodes so it's either going to the one across there plus the transistor or some other combination of let's go in the other polarity and we're getting just under 0.6 there, so that's basically one diode as well. So that would suggest the diodes things on that one are perfectly fine. Now these were shorted before, so I don't really expect anything much different. So yeah, shorted in that direction. And shorted that one, so we're not getting any voltage drop, because the diodes are shorted through. And again, this one probably going to be a very similar deal. Yeah, so shorted as we had before. So. The failure on the uh, failed ones is basically going to be either that diode across the coil or the transistor or both. So basically when it's trying to apply power from the microcontroller it's just trying to drive into a uh, dead short and of course the relay coil is not turning on. Now uh, in terms of uh, repairing these in theory you could replace those components there and then it would work again. We're not going to be doing that because we don't particularly want to be using these things. I say these being sort of standby savers their whole function is become less relevant now because pretty much all modern equipment is designed to use virtually nothing when in standby. But of course these were designed for older stuff where it's used in some cases tens of watts in standby. But say so in theory you could uh, take those off there and replace them and then of course uh, it would work again. But say so we're not going to be uh, doing that this time. So uh, that's pretty much it for this time and until next time thanks for watching.